Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is December 29th and we are looking here at the infrared satellite imagery and I've got the Doppler radars overlay. You can see we had a few thunderstorms moving across some of the North Sacramento Valley here and that frontal system is pushing down across the central coast but it is losing its punch as far as precipitation is concerned. Although it will bring some gusty winds with it as we go through the day today also. And then we'll take a look at what is next to come. And if we take a closer look, I believe this is Shasta County Convergence zone action there was a couple lightning st uh, strikes there it's where terrain features are interacting give a convergent zone feature up there i'll probably talk uh, in more detail about that at some point eventually but in the meantime you can go and google that if you like but taking a look at the eureka california they do mention the 15, 18 to 22 foot breakers for all west facing beaches and this kind of it just shows that there is elevated wave action up and down the entire California coastline here for the next couple of days. I'll show you the wave map here in a moment. But look at some of the gusty winds out there. I mean, some of the Sacramento Valley was gusting pretty well also. But you can see around the Bay Area, mid 50s, 54 right there near the Golden Gate Bridge, 44 miles per hour. So you know, widespread as well. So a blustery system there. Now, if we take a look at what is going on today, this is, uh, you know, 10 a.m. through 8 p.m. Lightning, gusty winds, brief heavy rain, and some small hail. This is National Weather Service Sacramento. Always has the great graphics, and that is for today, December 29th. Now, looking at the timing here, uh, 5 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. is Sunday. That's today. This is for some more snow here, and it should be wrapping up here as we go through uh, the evening and nighttime hours, but you can see some higher totals of 12 plus inches over the peaks, 6,500 feet, and then dropping as we go through this afternoon as that colder air aloft starts to move in. We got the wind gust to 60 miles per hour as well, and watch out for the reduced uh, travel times there, or increased travel times in the chain controls. And uh, this is from, I believe, the Las Vegas National Weather Service, kind of showing you the Las Vegas area proper. Not too bad here, but once you get off across, you know, highway or Interstate 15 and some of the higher terrains, some of the canyons and gap areas, even a bit blustery down towards Palm Springs there, um, some of the interstates there, watch out for that. Uh, as you can see, this goes through this afternoon and evening. And this is a high wind warning for, uh, I believe this is for, yeah, Lee Canyon, Ca Kyle County, Deer Creek Highway, Blue Diamond Road. And this goes through 10 p.m. tonight. Some pretty strong winds there across some of the higher terrains and the wind exposed areas. Now, look at the wind map. If I put this into motion, you can see we are dealing with this elevated wave action until we go on in towards about the mid portion of the week. We have a little bit of a break, but then another storm system is going to be impacting Northern California at this time. And you can see it's going to be packing some waves with it as well, potentially spreading down across some of Southern California as we go on in through the next weekend. So always make sure to check before you go if you're heading out towards the, the coastal areas there, if you're doing some wave watching or whatnot. It's not a bad time of the year for it. Now, this is the European, the 12Z run. And if I put this into where we are right about now, you can see as the front moves down towards the central California coastline there, it is losing its punch. We're not bringing any precipitation this round across much of Southern California. Some of the transverse range, some light precipitation, looks like it's falling, but nothing for the Los Angeles or the San Diego Metro. And that's gonna bring some breezy conditions as that frontal system moves through. A little bit of a break as we go through uh, the day Tuesday, as you can see. But then as we go through what, Tuesday night, you can see Northern California start to get impacted some more mountain snows almost an atmospheric river looking feature and you can see the precipitation kind of continuing on as we go through the later portion of the week another vigorous frontal system there looks like it's swinging through on friday perhaps including the bay area and then as we go on into the future you can see additional systems and man it's just been one after another for northern california and not much for southern california and then you can see uh, the models are showing some kind of a break here as we go on to the extended forecast but a little bit too far to be worried about that but we could be dealing with some offshore winds at times as well as we go on into the uh, first week of uh, January. Now, taking a look, this is as we go through the day today. So here we are getting close to where we are right about now. And you can see some of these gusty winds, coastal waters, higher terrain, Sierra Nevada. These winds eventually will turn northerly as well, but kind of gusty out of the south as we go through the day today. And then we get that wind switch out of the north as we go on into tomorrow. You can kind of see that overtake as that frontal system will be moving through a dry front for many areas. And then as we go through this upcoming week, there is a little bit of offshore wind coming up here and some lower relative humidity. It's not a strong Santa Ana wind of it, it doesn't look like. But if we scroll far enough out here, I will show you something that's been showing up in the models as far as Santa Ana wind. So let's go ahead, my, sorry, my laptop's being a little bit slow here. We're clicking one at a time and it's being a bit, yeah, okay, here we go. So we're going a bit further out and you can kind of see these offshore winds develop, but this is way off in the forecast. We're talking about uh, January 7th here and it's first week of January, but we do have the potential for some offshore winds. It might have been showing that at time, uh, times with the high pressure coming down across the Great Basin. 
So speaking of such, if I scroll back and forth here pretty quickly, you notice this high up here, that is Arctic air. It kind of locked up on the east side of the Rockies, but this will be moving down over some of the central and eastern portions of the country. And if I scroll through, you notice another shot will come. And that also brings some higher pressure here for portions of the Great Basin that will drive some of these offshore winds. And you can kind of see that high pressure hanging out there for a bit as we go through the extended forecast. Now, uh, taking a look here, this is, I believe this is, yes, um, I'm sorry, I'm blocking that off, I believe, for you guys here. So that's this 850 millibar streamlines, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller because you probably can't see that quite well. But as we go off in through uh, the next few days, you can see on uh, Northern California, some, uh, some of that cooler than normal temperatures there for a little bit, but then we get kind of some ridging setting up. And again, you can see that Arctic air sliding down the east portion, uh, east of the Rockies there, down into central portions of the country. And then if we scroll up far enough, you can see how some of that cold air makes its way across the Great Basin. That would be that high pressure driving some of those offshore winds. And which in turn, of course, brings some lower relative humidities. And let me make that smaller again so it can fit the screen a bit better. But if I scroll way off into the extended forecast, I'm just going to want to show you where we're looking at in just a little Santa Ana 101. But you can kind of see the relative humidities aren't too bad here, but cold air does not hold as much moisture as warm air. So when you put push this out over the terrain, it compresses, warms, and it, the, low, uh, the relative humidities really drop off. You can see some of these single digits across some of Southern California. By the time that air gets out there, it's really not holding much moisture and you're compressing it and warming it up. So the relative humidities are very low. And that's what drives the fire danger with the offshore and the Santa Ana winds. As you can see, we're looking far off in the forecast, but just talking about something off in the future there. And I'm gonna make that smaller as well. Total precipitation in inches. Kind of the same story we've been dealing with. Northern California getting pegged at times. The Bay Area kind of in between. Some down towards the Central Coast, but not much at all for Southern California. But as you can see, we scroll through the end of the week, you can see the next round of heavy rainfall for Northern California at times. And then maybe one more brief system there, but then drying out a bit are we going to get some ridging setting up here over the southwest usa or some offshore flow that's what was uh, yet to be determined uh wrapping up today day one excessive rainfall alec that might not even be in play anymore if i update it let's see it still is for now but by day two we're not dealing with the excessive rainfall alec however probably going to get a reintroduction as we go towards the mid and end portion of the week with that next system here's the six to ten day above average for a lot of the west as you can see as we go through the first week of january below normal signal for california i don't like to see that but there it is and there's the west coast above average and below normal as we go through january 12th hopefully that changes up or something here you know there's always a chance of that fingers crossed and last couple of nights this was two nights ago and um, if I can scroll through here or get anything else, let me scroll back to that one. This was last night here. So the fountains are actually 60 to 100 feet. They're doing that again today. So I'm going to go out again tonight. But you can see at sunset, you can see the bog and the sulfur and whatnot coming up. And you can see just the scale. I mean, this is a monstrous mountain. So the picture does not do it justice. And this wall here is hundreds of feet high. And you can see the fountain down below and the lava spreading across the Kilauea, the Haole Mau Mau uh, floor there, the crater. But yeah, kind of treacherous terrain out there. You got to be careful as well, especially as it gets towards nighttime, as you can imagine. Then you can see last night, this wasn't, it was shooting higher than this, but this is just one picture I grabbed. You can see it's got a couple different, different vents. There was one back here splattering stuff up and one right here. And this was the main one. And that's the one going today quite a bit as well. Um, what else? Is this going to update? Yep, there it is. Oh yeah, this is, I, I brought um, some of my family that was, uh, that's out here as one that lives out here. We hiked out on this trail and you can kind of see their silhouette in front. It was just a spectacular show last night. It was so amazing. And you could actually hear the lava come, uh, bubbling up and down and around. It sounded like a waterfall in the distance. It was pretty amazing. And you could tell when it would start to flow a little bit more, you could hear it even more as well. But anyway, um, hope you guys are liking these videos. I am in Mountain View, Hawaii. I should be back here on uh, January 3rd, and I'll do my normal briefings at home. Uh, I'll try to do my normal briefings here day by day as well. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a good day, and I will talk to you guys again tomorrow, and if not, then definitely the next day.